Welcome, Thank guys, you. to the Timcast. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much you. for making it. Jarrett Coral, uh, Detroit entrepreneur, right? Music yeah. fan. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. And Thank record you. label owner and purveyor of vinyl, right? Yes, sir. Is that who you are? <laughs> That's me. I run uh, Jet Plastic Recordings. I started in around 2012, and uh, it's still going strong now. And I'm really proud of, you know any and all involvement obviously in the Detroit music scene you know because there's lots of talent here that's waiting, oh, to, be, waiting to be discovered and especially abroad yeah for you know, sure you know. yeah it seems like you're tapped into that and of course Tyson Mead right yep living yes. alt rock legend let's I, face it oh, I mean thank you thank, thank you so you. much for making it and coming with Gerald when I heard him mention that I was like whatever we have to do whatever, oh, awesome. whatever time whatever day we'll move heaven and earth thank you thank you I, I'm I, I'm I'm thank you. That's really nice, and I'm happy to be here. And and thank you. <laughs> yeah, what was really cool is getting knowing that you were coming uh -huh. and sort of catching up. I felt like I was oh, like yeah. sort of getting caught up with yeah, somebody, exactly. you know, like and uh, seeing w the, there's such a documentation on YouTube. Uh huh. You're pretty fortunate that there's a little there's a doc there's a, yeah. you can see the story. Yeah, you really can see everything i mean and you know i took a station identification for like 10 years and went to china and ran a boarding school and then i came back but it's all documented i mean i don't know i don't think of myself as being that interesting but other come on <laughs> come on there's there's modesty <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, look at what you just said. You just said, I went to China for 10 years to start a boarding school. <laughs> if that's not interesting, then I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. so how, uh, there's so many questions. When you say, I went to China for 10 years to start a boarding school. Yeah. There's a lot of questions in there, right? There, yeah, there uh, are. A, so yeah. can you unpack that uh, to use a, you know... A corporate um, term, but like, what what got you there? What got me there? I got, um, I was, I don't want to say, f how do I say this? I, I was not fed up with the music scene. I was, I was fed up with myself, with my own, vi like my own vision, or, or I just didn't feel like I could, I, I didn't have, it wasn't that I didn't have anything to write about i just didn't feel like music was the joy it w it wasn't bringing the joy to me that it had brought when i was a youngster and i and i as a a youngster as a kid i always thought well i'll do music and then i'll teach at a boarding school on the east coast and it turned out the east coast i didn't know was the east way east coast way like east. shanghai that east you know it's like that's as east as you can get before it becomes west again you is, know is there a boarding school component in your past is that what's the affinity to boarding school or no what? you know i i just always i think um watching those movies like goodbye mr chips and and just and um, I, i'm a big Dead poet society yeah all of that kind of stuff more of the like black and white Okay. hokey movies okay. from like the 40, 30s and 40s. And, oh, like uh, Archie and... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. All of that sort of... Uh, and I just thought, well, you know, that's what I'll do as an adult because that's what adults do. They do something that's an adult thing. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm an adult now. I'm, I'm running this boarding school in Shanghai. And, and I became more of an observer than a participant which is what adults do too. I was observing the kids. I was watching them have, uh, you know, having their day on the sports field or whatever. And I was a proud, like a proud parent because they were my students. But then one day into my office walked a student. Well, he had come into my office several times, but his Chinese, one of his Chinese teachers told me, hey, he plays violin, and he's he's really good. You should hear him. I was like, 
you do. And he, the next day he brought his violin back and he played for me. And it was that magic thing that people have that are, uh, that, you know, that only a few, a handful of people have. He had, there was this magic. He had it. He had, he had it, whatever it was. He had More it. importantly, the it spoke to you. And it spoke to me. And shortly after that, I went and wrote a song, Stay Alone, which uh, uh, Jarrett just put out on Jet Plastic as a single. We recorded it real lo-fi, even though it turned out really well on my Mac at, in the stool, in the school <laughs> audio room. And I just and I kept telling myself, well, no, I don't want to do, I'm not going to do music again. I'm an adult. I have a good job. I'm not, you know. And then Tyson's using the term adult very loosely. <laughs> <laughs> Adultish. Adultish. I mean, yeah, my students, I don't think, would have ever accused me of being an adult at all. I was like the I was like the inappropriate teacher. I would like hide behind the door and scare them when they walked into class. And and usually there was one instance when one of the students walked in and and he knew I was behind the door and he like did like he pushed the door and it pushed into my nose and I had this like bump on my nose and I went back to the teacher's office and the other teacher was like the Chinese teacher was like oh what has happened to you and I'm like oh you know and I tried to explain it I was like it's not his fault it's my fault and she started laughing and and she kept going oh I cannot wait for your next performance like (laughs) (laughs) so you became a performer for them they're waiting for the next show hey what time's the next (laughs) yeah what time's the next show because I was always you know doing I was the goofy like I was the cool uncle and and the woman that is running the boarding school with she was like the stern mom and I was the cool uncle so you know. uh, is there a is there a place you go and raise your hand and say I want to work at a boarding school in China <laughs> what's, think, what's the path to that How I think you, you just show up in China and say I'm American <laughs> I'm going to run do you a speak school. Chinese oh no oh, no okay. <laughs> I do not okay which means I'm not very good okay I can I can speak like I can have almost a maybe a three minute conversation, and after three minutes, it's just you know tumbleweeds yeah. basically. Right. Yeah. Because that's a massive. That's sort of the mother of all languages. Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's a, a yeah. It's it's. They it's have different dialects. Every, regional. Yeah. Re- have, exactly. And the inflections. Are, yeah. In Shanghai, they have Shanghainese, which isn't anything like Chinese. It's a totally different language. Really. Yeah. Wow. So. So what was the period of when did you go to China? I went in, I think I went 2005, 2006, first of 2006. And I was there, I guess I was there eight years until, you know, 2014, more, more or less. Yeah. So 2005 to 2000. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So had you been doing music? So you were still kind of kicking it. You're, I was you're... sort of, yeah, I'd, I'd semi, I mean, I, I, I w- had worked at an advertising agency uh, in New York, and then I actually was a, a radio, a, D, a daytime DJ in Oklahoma for a oh, little cool. bit before that, which yep. was awesome, I, I, and it was a great station um, that we played, you know, we played a lot of n- newer, I mean, new uh, cool stuff, and yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, wow, I, I, I'd stopped. I'd really stopped uh, making, I made a record in around Kitchens and Bathrooms, which uh, Jarrett is putting out on uh, vinyl. I um, made that in maybe 2002 and finished it in 2004. And that was a fun record to make because I was just going around to friends houses around the country and recording and like their kitchen or bathroom or whatever oh, cool. <laughs> and and uh but that but it wasn't like it was um sort of a collection of songs around that time that had made but after that i i really stopped writing songs and uh for 10 years i didn't really do any sort of music i i just thought i just didn't really feel like i had I would sit down with my guitar and not, you know, just not have anything. Does, is there a connection to, 
and listen, we can speak. I, I've been through it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, um, is there a level of, I didn't get this far. Is there a level of disappointment that weighs on you? Speaking. Oh, like yeah. It, no, no, no. I, I know like, exactly what you mean. Like, and, did, like with the gas tank being empty. Yeah. What happened with the kittens? Yeah. You know, like, is there a, does some despair set in, you know? It, it does. It's like, you know, I've definitely worked through it and come out on the other side. But I, you know, we had so many people telling us, you know, you're going to be you're going to be the next big thing. You're on, you know, we we had the same booking agent as the Smashing Pumpkins, you know, when Billy had, Billy Corgan had helped us a whole lot. And even he, in a inter, in an interview, in interview, he um, he said he, he just doesn't, he, he was like, I, I don't get it. I don't get the kittens have every song as a hit. Yeah. I don't get it. And, but I look at it now and I think, wow, I got this other cool opportunity that I absolutely wouldn't trade for the being a lifer as a musician, you know, because there's this there's, thing. There's blessings there. There's yeah. blessings. Yeah. yeah because Believe you see, me. you know, and I stopped, um, I, I stopped drinking and now, you know, I'm having a little sweetener in my coffee, but I, I did stop. I was a, a, a pretty by the end of the kittens, I was a mess and just, you know, um, and until I guess 11 years, I, I stopped drinking 11 years ago. And now I, you know, I tell Congratulations, people, man. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I tell people I don't, I, for a while I didn't drink anything. And now I realize, well, I can have, you know, a little bit, but I, I, it, it's more important to not, for me to not, um, because I was, I, you know, was drinking like a bottle of vodka a day at the end of, by the end of the kitchen. That's the real thing, yeah. and that's the real yeah. thing where it's like. So, I don't know if I, in that kittens world of you have everyone, you know, saying you know in the in the music world or whatever where everything is okay and you don't have any sort of parameters yeah. set on you. No and, boundaries. Yeah, yeah, no boundaries, and and. I feel like I was giving, given a um, sort of a blessing for not, by not getting to that certain level. You know? By that not maxing out. Exactly. It, it could have saved you it from have saved some me. consequences. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I'm fairly healthy too. and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've, I, I am, I think, grateful that I'm around and healthy, you know? And yeah. so, uh, so... I think at the time there was that was part of why I stopped making music because I thought, you know, why, why do it? And then, well, it's a, it's an untold story. I think it's yeah, a, it's it's an untold story. There's these bands that make it, make it, make it, right? Yeah, and, and you and that's what you're inundated with is the yeah. story of making it, of making whether it. it's a long, slow burn, whether yeah. it's an overnight thing. We're all sort of inundated with. How, the make it version of the story. Exactly, right? yeah. And then we're all also quite familiar with the one hit wonder version yeah, of the story, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, been absolutely. celebrated in movies yeah, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But then there's Tyson Mead, there's the, yeah. the Chainsaw Kittens, yeah. where it's like, wait a second, so, uh, such an awesome body of work in such a short time. Yeah. Way, way ahead of your time. Yeah. Like, way ahead of your time. Yeah, I feel like right? we were, yeah. And just like you're, you're sort of playing in that sandbox right exactly. where it was like it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming, it's yeah, coming, it's coming. Yeah, yeah and then it doesn't yeah and you're left with a cult following yeah you're left with friends and experiences yeah exactly and, but you never yeah we well, you, you, you didn't it, get on that radar of those other stories the one hit wonder stories. exactly the slow burn long you know long career stories yeah you didn't get that yeah exactly but then i'm grateful that i and i i don't mean to use them as an example but i use I always kind of use that band Dishwalla as a yeah. example of they had that one yeah. hit and it was um, and you know uh, uh, do you what it's something about God yes and and they, you know it up. <laughs> and you know it's like I don't know anything about them other than that and it's kind it kind of probably I would think it kind of runs their whole catalog because maybe they're actually a really good band. 
Well, it's funny because Counting Blue Cars, great song. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny because me being in a... Um, a 90s band. Yeah, because you were in Sponge, Sponge, right? yeah, yeah, for okay. 10 years. Yeah. Joined after the third record. Mm -hmm. And um, w so all of a sudden, we were in the 90s thing. Like, yeah. We were in the thick of it. We did a tour, a package tour. Yeah. Like in 2001, 2002. Uh -huh. They called it the New World Order Tour. Yeah. With that Spin Doctors, Gin Blossom, Seven Minutes, oh, yeah. Sponge, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And that was kind of like hopeful. I thought, oh, here it goes. Yeah. It's going to be the 90s. We're going to yeah. be playing every summer. It didn't really pan out yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah. But you'd come across these guys. Like, in the weirdest places, these bands that you love their song. Yeah. Like, you know, like, the, like say the kittens were still sort of plugging away. We would have crossed Yeah, paths, absolutely, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Early yeah, exactly. 2000s. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny, and you go, oh, I love that song. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get the comparison. Yeah, and so, like, with us, you know, and also we've had... Um, the thing about being the cult band is we... History has been very kind to us, and we've also been very... Uh, Trent Bell, the my co... You know, co-captain and the kittens, as it you were. You guys are the founders. Yeah, yeah, and he, you and know, still friends, right? And still, are... like he, he works, he works on all my records, my solo records, and and we're 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 best pals, and 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 we're sort of guardians of the name too. Like we, we don't, we've, uh, we're if we place, we played a festival ten years ago, but if. Uh, it's not something like that, then we just, you know, and we make sure that the, we're uh, with band, like we played, it was us and Polyphonic Spree and some other bands like that, right. you know. So you're not on a double bill with um, LL Cool J. Yeah, or something, exactly. Like, and, some yeah, and, and, thing, yeah, yeah, and, and we're, we're just really. Not that that um, would be bad. No, I love, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jingling, baby. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, we're very careful with how we go about because I'll I'll uh take chances with my name and do things uh but with the kittens, you know, I'm very guarded about okay, what we do just because we want to have that you know, there's a little bit of reverence just because we never got that you know, we never yeah. got our day. You know, we, it's also good because it, the kittens weren't something that was like a crash and burn scenario. It kind yeah. of just faded out. And yeah. then, you know, because there's really nothing bad you can say about it. Yeah, exactly. Other than, you know, they're the band right. that should have made it. Yeah, the story, exactly. The story has yet to be told, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, exactly. So you guys, in caring for the name, you can kind of continue the story. I exactly, exactly. And, and with me and my work and with the kittens and solo work and my painting, because I'm an abstract painter as well, I, I just look as, at everything as my body of work that at the end of the day, at the end of my life... I'll have, whether it's celebrated or not, I will have it and I'll be proud of it. And totally, that's, yeah. that's my main that, thing. It th was this for me, was this was really from the time I retired from touring. Yeah. I was like, I got to do, I got to get behind a microphone. I got to talk with people. Yeah. I think that's a great thing to yeah. like, you know, to have, to find, you know, that because really the next chapter for me is, is my solo doing music, my solo, but also I love painting just as much. I have, I get this, you know, joy from painting as well. I watched you know? the video on on YouTube. Uh, yeah, we're talking yeah. about um, what a great interview. That is that a guy, a friend of yours? The, yeah, he's a he's, he's another a local artist. Guy. Yeah, he's an artist that uh, he does a lot of jewelry and and such. And and he was like, hey, I just want to, I I really want to interview you about your. Uh, the process of your painting and I was like yeah sure you know and so and I like when I when he said yeah it's ready I didn't know it'd be at this hour long documentary yeah. I thought it'd be like five minutes or something he and did a good job he really did it, I mean you know I, I you, I usually if, don't if like. If you're listening, if yeah. you, YouTube Tyson Mead, uh, M E A D E. Um, if you just put Tyson Mead in YouTube, it's one of the things that comes up. Yeah, so there's some kitten stuff it's and pretty, yeah. pretty. It's a 2016, correct. like you guys yeah. did this summer. Right? Yeah, we did it over the summer, spring, summer. So yeah, it, it's a, a fairly new. He just, yeah, he just posted it, you know, a month or so, two, two months ago, maybe. Because your paintings are pretty well known on social media. You post them and people buy them. Uh, yeah, yeah, people exactly. People don't know anything about the process because it's certainly interesting work. I think it is really yeah. interesting. And, oh, and, yeah. and with painting, I, I just, um, I posted one and just 
sort of saying, oh, this is what I'm doing now. And before the paint had even dried, someone was like, I want to buy it. How much? And I, and then it became the thing where I was just doing commissions, commissions. And, and, and now I'm, I have a couple commissions in the, that I need to do. So you're still backlogged on commissions. Yeah. So I'm still backlogged. When, when did you post that first one on Facebook? When that was, was that? April two years ago. Okay. And I've done maybe 25 since then. Wow. Yeah. And they've mostly been commissioned. They've all been commissioned. All After been commissioned. that, it was like... I. So I as soon as you go in that backyard, that cloth is spoken for. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I think... I was watching it. What really struck me is... You, you're buying just like we put like magnetic signals to tape uh -huh. and grooves to records, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. You're putting these colors on, yeah. But it's how they got there. That's what struck me with your me your medium and yeah. your approach, your technique. Yeah. You got to watch this if you're listening. Go to go to YouTube because Tyson, you fill up a can and you kind of get off a little bit on the colors and yeah, the can exactly. and what's happening yeah. there. Absolutely, right? yeah. And then your whole thing is your yeah. approach is you go about. 10, 15 yards yeah. from, from the, and you've got this bed. Where'd you get that bed frame? How long have you had that bed frame? <laughs> it was just part of my, when I bought the house, it, there was all it this was junk that was just there. And I, you know. The, the, the oldest bed frame that you could ever imagine. <laughs> if you had to imagine an ancient bed frame, that's what this man is using to create this amazing art. So he leans the bed frame against a tree. Yeah. Then the, the Against the cloth, a peach tree. Yeah. And then the canvas. Yeah, yeah. And then you just go back about 10, 15 yards and you wind up and you run yeah I and whatever happens Mickey Mantle or and you something. just yeah you <laughs> throw the paint there and then you kind of just let it go and, and then let it go and and you know you kind of know when to stop at some point it's like and I feel like with this it's been really crazy because I do I also do a poem with each painting a really once it's done I do this stream of conscious uh on an old on the back of an old record sleeve, I'll really? write a, about the painting. I give the painting a name, and it's has because everyone who buys something, I know. I ask if I don't know them, I ask a little bit, or I know, or I say, you know what? I just ask a, a little bit about them, and oh, then, you do. and oh. then I have, and then something comes to me, and I write it, and I I had a woman. Who, who who's actually a a, a, a good friend? Um, she said, "Well, I ha I love my puppies that have passed on, and and so I, when I presented her the painting, she's like, oh my god, I see them, and she and I didn't see them, but she saw them, and then, and then she teared she up. She saw the puppies in the painting. In the painting. Wow. And the, and she's like, oh, there's you know this one and there's that one, and then. And then she teared up, and she's like, "And there's my uh, my my father passed away. There's his cane, and I, and I had no idea her father. You know, I, I I didn't have that information. And she just pulled all the stuff. And out she of and it. that and and so, I feel like when I'm doing it, it's you know don't it, there's you know I'm I'm working as sort of a, uh, in a medium where I'm a medium, I guess, and 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 it's well, been, that's what it c comes off as a little bit, like you're channeling almost, and and, yeah. and it's sort of the same. I do the same as with music. It's like I have, you know, the songs just arrive, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, yeah. uh, you know, they're just kind of there, and yeah. and I'm just picking them out of the air, basically. Well, I tell you, Connie is like, I I have. I call it curating. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I've curated not one hit wonders like uh -huh. the unknown, the un yeah, yeah. unsung songs. Absolutely. I have a couple of them, you know, yeah. from different generations yeah. and you know, they're on my Spotify. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're nothing that anybody would have ever heard of. No, no. But when you play them for somebody, yeah. It's like it was a hit. Like yeah. you could play it for a room and I'll and I'll watch people. Yeah. Like if I play Connie, yeah. there's a song from the X he's called Creeper Kamikaze. Uh -huh. I'll play that and it was never on the radio. Yeah, hardly yeah, no, or, no not really, no. And um just look at people, you know, in the room. Yeah. And you can tell that they're as comfortable with it as they are a hit song in that genre. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I kind of pride myself in curating those little gems. And I, I, long story, sorry to babble, but Connie's no, no, one great. of them. Connie's one of those songs. Oh, that's that's really great and to it hear. And absolutely should have and could have been a hit. Like I I I get what Corgan's saying because he's right. Yeah. You know, everything was there. It was all there, you know, and it just there is something 
about the mechanism of how the you were ahead of it. Works. They were yeah. ahead. You were ahead. Yeah, and sometimes you that's too far like ahead. the the kiss of death to be ahead of the whole curve instead of 92 you know. is when the whole record who was your hero who was your anr that championed the kittens uh well we we were on you know before the kittens i had defenestration and that was the that and then there was a metal band and 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 uh the uk that came out with, as defenestration but we defenestration came out in 86 with a record and we were we that was before jane's addiction and they were at that point big fans of ours because they had just done a demo and we were both on kxlu and in la as okay. uh, you know kind of the next things and and then defenestration um went down the tubes we were on relativity records they we got signed to relativity and and they were licensing at the same time they had robin hitchcock and cocteau twins and yeah. some other really great relativity stuff relativity was some yeah relativity years. yeah was some uh, was some really you know it was a, a good label and then um defenestration you know kind of stupid kids that you know didn't really understand what we we were you know it was kind of our fault we you know and then Chainsaw Kittens happened, and Jay Ferris at Mammoth, uh, well, actually, Hope from Fetch and Bounds, I don't know if you remember them. It uh, doesn't ring a bell. Um, they were a band in Charlotte, North Carolina, that were another one of those next big thing kind of bands. Yeah. And uh, they were kind of the precursors to, like, Hole, I guess. And, okay. And Babes in Toyland and stuff like that. And it, and she, there was only one. Well, no, there were two, two women in the band, her and, and the bass player. But uh, she was our, Hope Nichols was our, our big, like, cheerleader. And she gave it our tape to Jay Ferris at Mammoth. And, okay. and he, he, Jay Ferris and Steve Balcom at Mammoth were, but they were a small label. They got us... On to Atlantic, you know, but they, uh, that was at the point when Atlantic signed everyone. They had, you know, they had. So that was when you had to get signed labels. and then you yeah. had to get, yeah. You had to get uh, the team behind you. Yeah. And so, and, but with, with um, Flipped Out in Singapore, that came out before we were on Atlantic. The next album, Pop Eris, came out on Atlantic. And oh, okay. flipped out in Singapore. They really is that on Mammoth. Flipped yeah, that's on. Yeah, that's okay. on Mammoth, and that's the one so, that Butch Fig produced because Billy told him, <sighs> "Hey, you need to produce this band." Basically, Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan did a whole lot for so us. So Butch Fig produced the uh, first album, Singapore. Uh, second album, we had oh, Violent Religion. Right. We had okay. Violent Religion, and then. Uh, flipped out in Singapore and then Pop Eris. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it it gets confusing. I even get confused as to which one's right. which, and I could even be wrong. Connie <laughs> Connie's on uh, flipped out. Flipped in out. Sing yeah. Okay, exactly. So who produced that? That was Butch Vig. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and no that was our I second that album. Song. Yeah. Yeah. That's so all coming together. And that was uh, and our first album was Violent Religion, and that's the one that Billy heard that he he. Uh, heard it while they were doing Gish, and uh, he fell in love with it. And he was like, "Hey, you've got to produce their next record to Butch." Did you go up to Butch's to do that record? Yeah, were you up, up there in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, Madison. Yes, yes. Wow, yeah. how was that? It was, you know, and Butch wasn't Butch yet. I mean, he was, but he wasn't. Like when we were recording it, that's when well, he done like never, tears. Yeah, yeah, it had just hit. Like when we watched it, I think we watched it premiere. On uh, wow. you know the while you're bin. working with Butch. yeah while oh, we're and wow he and it was just a weird thing you know and then it got it hadn't got crazy yet it just gotten like wow this is you know MTV is really paying attention to this yeah this could, you know but you know weird times yeah weird, weird times. times but you know you 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 never know even then uh, with them it could have gone either way you know I mean but the people spoke and it's like. Yeah, you know what the common denominator is. It, it, it even kind of plays out in um, in my story with the band that I was in. Vinny was in a band uh, before Sponge, uh -huh. and they had a record deal. Yeah, and they were kind of Jane's Addiction ish. Yeah, and then you just mentioned Jane's Addiction. Yeah, it occurs to me 
that that's kind of a common thread. Yeah, Jane's was happening as the yeah. hair, hair metal thing is yeah, dying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jane's might be that missing link that I think bridges they are, us. To, yeah, I think they really are because, like, Defenestration, we were, you know, we we had our first record before when Jane had a demo, and so. Um, and we were just like mining, basically we were mining when Aerosmith were good, we were mining the old Aerosmith, New York Dolls, yeah. Cheap Trick, you know, Move, you know. Yeah. Also, I hear, um, Stone Roses in that. And okay. Like, yeah. There dogs were, to more. A little yeah. Bit. There was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a little more, a little of that, like, because the Stones and, you know, and, you know, my first, my first. First love was always the Beatles, you know. I mean, you just can't. Yeah. As as much as people are like, oh, they're overrated. I'm like, you know, they're not. Yeah, but, <laughs> but they're the Beatles. But they're the Beatles, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. But they're the Beatles, and, <laughs> right? Uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it 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 just, I'm, I love that because the my heroes at the end of the day, the one the people that uh, I really love the way they lived uh sometimes minus the heroin or whatever sure. of course is sure. like nico and and um people that had these sort of you know lives that weren't the they weren't you know, consumed by like uh brian ferry a little yeah, bit yeah exactly brian ferry brian eno you know yeah. I, all those guys just dignified uh, yeah like, dignified. Like, like they didn't they didn't lean on it too much. Yeah. The fact that whatever happened with music was just another thing that yeah, they did, another they feather. Did. Yeah, in the, exactly. Yeah. So. So that's what we're doing. Is that what we'll call it then? It's just another feather in our. It's cap. just another feather, and, okay. and I love it. I'm it's going a with big that. feather. Yeah. But you know, it, it might be five feathers on the headdress. You know, but yeah, I, I love I, it. You know, just a feather in the cap. Yeah. So you, young man, man, you got uh, on my radar, I, and I've. I've been stalking you on Facebook, oh, right? Thanks, Trying to yeah. get you, you know, on the show. Right. And this is just a bonus. This is just so awesome that you had, <laughs> that you were here. And, right. Yeah, I certainly appreciate it. Thank um, you. So I'm going through Facebook, and I see this thing outside the Fox Theater, where something about uh, Josh Homme and Iggy blowing off some fans, oh, and that yeah, caught that was, my attention. That was you know, I'm like, oh, oh, what happened uh, here? Right. And. Uh, and all of a sudden, there's this kid at the center of it, and he ends up writing a piece for the Metro Times. Right, yeah. So tell us what happened um, on the side door, right? Wow, okay. Um, well, You were just there to see the show. You weren't there in a sort of record company capacity, right? You were just there to... No, I, I, I like Tyson. I love Iggy Pop. Yeah. So, um, and I saw that uh, Josh and the Queens of Stone Age guys, Dean Fertitta, and um, Matt Hollers, I think, from... I think he was in the, he's in the Arctic Monkeys, although I'm not sure... Um, they, they were getting together to do a show, and they were doing a tour at the Fox Theater. Uh, he didn't do any Stooges songs. It was mostly, they, actually, it was all his solo stuff, a lot of stuff from the new album, but Lust for Life, of course, and, you know, China Oh, they Girl. did do Lust for Life? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, it was like a greatest hits of Iggy solo stuff, no Stooges, okay. which I kind of wanted to see since I never got to see the Stooges, and, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I've not, I haven't seen Iggy before, so this is my first time. But um, after the show, they had, uh, at the Museum of Contemporary Art, they had a photo exhibition, um, of Iggy's pretty much like tour tour diary photos, I think it was. Okay. And um, Josh Hame was there, and he wasn't taking uh, he, well, he was taking pictures with fans, but he wasn't doing autographs, which um, kind of upset some fans, especially some autograph hounds who were outside who really wanted to. You know, there's get, people who it's an get, occupation, right? I, 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 they bring a stack yeah, of shit I, I, and yeah, they want I mean, to sign. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I understand that. You know, I've never really been, you know, one for autographs. I mean, if I'm there, you know, because I'm, if I'm, you know, I met Alice Cooper. Like, I'm gonna get my record signed. But you know, if it's like, you know, if I'm, if I'm just there to do it, I don't understand, you know, the value of a signature on a record. Um, right. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. I'm the same way. It's fun going yeah, around, but it's like it's just another material thing, I guess. So Josh was wasn't signing things, but he was taking pictures with people, which is you know, which was which was cool of him to do since he didn't have to do anything, you know, anything for the for these fans because really, he had played the show and he came after and then he offered to take pictures with people, which would have been cool enough. But then uh, some of the autograph hounds got pretty upset and they just um, started yelling at him, and then he went inside and he was obviously ticked off by that, and. Uh, I got inside and I talked to him about it, and he's he was just 
upset about that state. And I think that kind of, you know, this was almost, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, but it, it, it's kind of, it kind of shows the state of music now. I mean, um, you know, Iggy Pop, if Iggy Pop put a new record out tomorrow when he self-released it, obviously people would listen because he's Iggy Pop. But I mean, if a musician has to rely on a major label for something like Tyson had to do with the kittens, because you know they're they only they they got they got as far as they could, and with without you know, without really support from from the major labels, and then they they got some, but when it comes down to it, there's only so much so far a local musician can get. Yes, when it comes especially to back that. then, we right. we were, everything that we did back then was. Exactly. To make yourself valuable for the major record label, yeah. so you you were trying to do all these certain things, exactly. So you weren't too big, yeah. You no, know, you weren't too published, yeah, exactly. But you were published enough to be proven, exactly. It was a dance that we were all doing, exactly. in the early nineties, yeah. It was yeah. a dance, yeah. And if you did the dance wrong, you didn't get to go to no, the show, no, you know? exactly. Yeah, and and we didn't have right, yeah. Facebook, we right, didn't right, have internet, yeah, 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 nothing right. to fall back on, yeah, man. yeah, absolutely. And uh, Tyson and I were talking about that in the car about um you know facebook and social media how that's been a really big asset for bands but it's also hurt it in a way because i mean local shows are still going on but now you know there you you can skip the show and then afterwards you can go on youtube and you can see someone shooting a video from it and then you save five bucks you don't need to drive down there and you can just sit at your computer and watch it which really and what about that how's that where do you stand on that like what um, well, because well, I mean, you're you're this old soul who appreciates the way it was is what I'm getting from you. Yeah, I mean, and then um, but you're here yeah. in the thick of it, you know. I appreciate it. I mean, of course, um, one of my one of my best friends, Shayla, she goes around and tapes, you know, tapes bands, and then puts puts it online for people that can't be there, and and other people from out of town can watch it and stuff. But um, you know, I, I I appreciate that it's done, but. I see like that kind of stuff as more of a document of what happened, you know, more so I would say for people that were there or people that, you know, uh, like, yeah. like that kind of thing. But when it, when it comes to a point where you elect to just stay in the house because you don't need to, or I was talking or talking with Tyson about the Oklahoma scene, uh-huh. how people, you know, people in Oklahoma might view Tyson like, oh, he's from Oklahoma, so we don't have to go to the show tonight he'll always because, be there. because yeah. he'll be here, you know, we can see him next time. Mm-hmm. And you know, even though you don't necessarily know when the next time is, it's more so something where I don't know. It's just kind of it's kind of difficult in a way now, and especially with records, you know, because you know the major label is kind of a dying thing now. Yeah, I mean, especially for like, I mean, a band like the Kittens would never get signed now. No, like, like no. ever. No, <laughs> because because no. you know, like like Adele. She 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 got signed, and of course she she's she's a great talent. But I mean, when it comes to you know taking a gamble on things, yeah, it's it's less so that because people people I mean actually the major labels tend to stay in you know stay true to form if they're releasing like One Direction they go on to the next boy band or they go true. to this because they're like this is successful and we want to put our money where something's successful we don't want to try something new, which is really interesting because there's been a there's been a like a de evolution of that. And it's oh, been, there's the, it's, it's been there's the de- de-evolution of the position. Oh, definitely the A and R yeah. person. That's totally. what is that? The, That's is there any? Are there A and R people anymore? I, people calling themselves A and R? Going on Facebook and posting and stuff. Really, I would like to enter enter C or enter whatever uh, interject that when Defenestration was doing it, it was that way because uh, you know we had one meeting with a major label. We. Uh, met with Epic, and at that time, Husker Du were like the only one of the only bands who had been signed, and they just put out Warehouse, I think Warehouse, and uh, and the people at Epic were like, oh well, when you have four more albums and you've proven have a proven track record, yeah, we'll talk to you again, but we just don't sign uh, young bands, and then. Uh, and then fast forward to the Nirvana thing, and after that, I mean, there were people that were getting signed at gas stations because they looked like they oh, should yeah. be in a band. You yeah, know? that happened a lot. So, there was a huge rush for that. Exactly. After post-Nirvana Soundgarden. Exactly. And yeah. then it was like, oh, well, they have long hair. They look good. Yep. We'll sign them. But yeah. it, it was that way, very much that way in the 80s, because it, 
if you were, you know, if you weren't doing, especially if you weren't doing, I hate to say Thompson Twins because I use them in a, as if you weren't doing this real sort of glossy synthesizer based music. Right. Yeah. Uh, then the record companies didn't think you were relevant. Like, oh, rock and roll band, nobody wants to hear that. You yeah, know? see, you're, <laughs> like, it's a great story, but you had the unfortunate position of time to where you're talking about when people were still hung over from the 80s. Yeah, exactly. Like, these exactly. people are, you got executives that are still doing cocaine all day, oh, every, yeah, you know what exactly, I mean? exactly. So there was just this, like, hangover. I mean, 91, 92, you really couldn't tell the difference. No. Until fucking Nirvana, and so, until yeah, everybody exactly. got hit in the face. With Exactly. Like, then it changed, yeah. you know? And then I learned that the best way for an A&R guy to keep his job was to not sign anybody. Yeah. You know, after the flourish of the grunge thing. Exactly. Then I've, all the reins got tightened up, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I remember um, some examples of people at Mammoth knowing some A&R guys at... Uh, at Atlantic and going, what? What has he signed? Well, I mean, he's like a big deal there. What's he signed? And everyone's like, That's nothing. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Not. He's not signed anything. I mean, he had a meeting with, you know, this person and a meeting with that person, but he's not signed anyone. Yeah, you know. That, that became the A and R guy for a while. Yeah. The thing about that thing with with Josh Homme, though, mm -hmm. so. It, the story goes like onto TMZ. It, the, the story right. gets laid. Him, him refusing to sign autographs, being that guy. Right. That story gets legs nationally. Mm -hmm. And so you step up and, and write a piece in the Metro Times, kind of setting the record straight. I felt that it was my duty to do that rather than well, bravo, you man. know, allowing him. You know, because I'm not like close personal friends with Josh Hame. So no, but you were there. You know, but I was there, so I felt that it was my duty to do that. But I mean. There's a certain thing to be said about musicians who, you know, distance themselves from their fans. Like, I'd say, I'd say, like, I'd hate to use Billy, Billy as an example, but he has, you know, like, and I mean, nothing negative. I love the Smashing Pumpkins and Billy's great, but I mean, it's gotten to a point where, you know, it's impossible for him to interact with these, with these fans because there's just so many of them and everybody's asking for something from him. Everybody's asking for an autograph. Everybody wants a picture. Yeah. You know, everybody wants him to come there, come there. And it's tough because, you know, being a musician, especially one of that caliber, you know, I can't imagine how difficult that would be to lead that life. But I mean, other, other musicians like, like Josh, who, you know, stood stood outside. You know, and this this was freezing. This was in the winter. And yeah. It was really really cold. Believe me. But and um, he took pictures yeah, with everybody. He, yeah, he took pictures. I have a picture with him that's in the in the article thing for you yep. know for proof. And other people got pictures with them, and everything. And there were a few fans there who were really grateful for that. But there were also people that were you know, obviously against it because they wanted to make a profit off of him. And I can imagine that's kind of where Billy's coming from, because some people you know obviously claim to be fans and they're just or friends and they're just out there you know for their own personal gain or they want something because they're trying to piggyback off of them and you know a certain thing needs to be said about you know people like josh and other people i know you know it really using billy was a bad example because he's not mean to fans it's just difficult for him to no but the point you know, is still valid the distance yeah, you yeah, know the yeah. it yeah. doesn't have to be exiled to be yeah. distant it's, it's more distant. so more so necessary for him to keep the distance yeah but, um, you know, Josh... Now, if you really want to get away from your fans, you know great. what you do? You go to China. <laughs> yeah, that's what I had to do. <laughs> it worked. It yeah. worked. <laughs> it, you oh. get way away from your fans in China. Yeah, exactly. Go, go work at a boarding school. I know. <laughs> right, but uh, Tyson did that record in uh, Tomorrow in Progress, and I think you worked on that while you were in China. Yeah, I did uh, right. most of the basic tracks in China, and uh, then I came back, and my buddy Trent, uh, who was my co-captain in the Chainsaw Kittens, he has a really... Trent Taco Bell. Taco Bell, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a... Shout uh, out. Shout out to Trent. <laughs> Tra to yeah, who, um, he has a really great studio in Oklahoma, um, and I did the drums there. And then... Uh, Jimmy Chamberlain uh, played drums on it as well. Get out of here. And so that was great. How many tracks? He played drums on two tracks. On this thing that, that you're putting out? On well, uh, the, this is Tomorrow in Progress, the, the last. The last album yeah. that I put out. Okay. Yeah. And then the, the new album has, oh gosh, who does it have on it? I, 
I did again. I did some of it in China. I went to Beijing to um, uh, record with some like cool Chinese bands there, and cool. they they were on it. And uh, I did some at uh, at my home studio, and then Trent did the drums. And so um, the Flaming Lips drummer is on some of it, and then the um, right. Sugar Free All Stars who are. Uh, uh, Number one rated, uh, according to Sirius XM, uh, kids great, band. Great name. The drummer in uh, their band played on most of it because he's just he's this phenomenal drummer. And then I went to L.A. and finished it with my friend Emmy, who is David Emmerich. He's in the Counting Crows, but he's also in Camper Van Beethoven sometimes and oh. and he's just like he played with John Hyatt he's played with yeah. everyone he's he like you can say hey I want this song and he played bass and guitar and, and electric sitar and just and whirly hose and um, just anything he could get a hold of I I, I would tell him, hey, I want this, like imagine John Lennon's in a fish tank and Ricky, Lu Ricky, Lee, Joan walk Ricky Lee Jones walks by with uh, Black Francis. This is what, that, that's what I want this song to sound like. And he's like, I got it. And I'll put a little Vandergraaf generator in with it. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I want it like. And so, wow. so we finished it at, with him and my friend uh, Clay Blair, who who uh, Emmy David Emmerich uh, introduced me to at at um, what used to be Producers Workshop in L. A. where uh, Pink Floyd did the U. S. part of the Wall, what they okay. recorded in the U. S. They did yeah there. overdubs and yeah, uh, and now it's called Boulevard Recording. Okay, and uh, Fleetwood Mac Rumors was mixed there too. Oh. So it's like this old sort of, uh, it's Bob Ezrin who d did all the Alice Cooper stuff, right. or most of it at least. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, cool. It's his, his favorite room. So That must have had a vibe too. So it had a vibe. I mean, yeah, it was kind of a magic. It was definitely, and, and when I was there, you know, Bob Ezrin would text Clay and go, hey, you know, or, or Steve Lillywhite who produced, you know, the first U2 yeah. and um, Psychedelic Furs would, you know, and, and, and there was one story that... Uh, Clay was like, so Brian Eno producing you, no, you too after you, you know, you kind of you gave them their sound and or helped them, you know, harness their sound or whatever. And I guess Steve, I shouldn't be telling that, but it's funny. <laughs> Steve L Lily White was like, oh, you know, Brian Eno, he does his thing. It's that thing that he does, you know, and it's, it's just, just a like, thing. Yeah, yeah, he does that thing. That Brian Eno thing. That Brian Eno wow. thing, which I wish. You know, I wish I was that big that people would go, oh, you know, Tyson, yeah, he does that thing that he does. You might be surprised, though. There might be some bands might be around some. here saying, do that Tyson thing, <laughs> telling their singer to do that Tyson thing. Exactly. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <They're>, that's true. <laughs> so your love for, usually I've noticed with musicians, like the love of music, like the love of guitar, the love of Led Zeppelin or the Beatles, like we were talking about, always comes from like an uncle figure or something like that. Is that, is that true in your case? Did it, is there somebody that, cause you're, how old are you, Jared, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, I'm 18. 18. Dude, and you're just kicking ass already at 18. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's very impressive, but one has to wonder like, where'd it come from? Um, who, who? Yeah. My father. Where are you from, dude? My, what planet? <laughs> Shanghai. Shanghai. <laughs> yeah. I was one of Tyson's students. No, um, <laughs> uh, my father and my uncle um, involved in a in a record store, and um, really coming from that, you know, I had an interest in records at a young age. Of okay. course. So there so, it is. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of, it's kind kind of like that thing, and of course, you know. The next logical step from being a record collector is making your own records. And I've always felt that it's easier to promote other people than it is to promote myself because I just feel like an idiot going online and, like, come to my show tonight. It's going to be great because, you know, it's obviously, you know, kind of biased. So, uh. Do you know how rare that is, Jared? Like, that quality is very rare. For you, and I, I understand and respect yeah. 100% what you're saying. You would rather be the guy on the mountain right. talking about this this other yeah. this thing that you enjoy. Because people are more likely to listen to it if I say, "Oh, Tyson's great. Here's his new record." But if As I say, to I'm but, "But if I say, here's my new record and it's really great," which of course you know nobody would listen to. Dude, that's an amazing thing. That's care. like Brian Epstein. 
Like that's yeah. that's like the Colonel, uh, you know, like yeah, the, yeah, that, Colonel that, Tom Parker, that quality yeah. that you have is um hope i'm not as crazy as the colonel <laughs> yeah. you never know the boy yeah. could he make chicken oh a so, different colonel <laughs> sorry so what was the first <laughs> what was the first <laughs> vinyl that you pressed that what was oh. the first thing that jet plastic recordings did um did a seven inch by a local band called after dark amusement park who okay. um and the bass player is greg Bayer. And he plays in some other projects. He was play- touring with uh, Rodriguez, the Searching for Sugar Man. Yeah, okay. And um, he was in that band Grayling, who are one of my all-time Grayling, favorites. played shows with Grayling. They fantastic. opened for Sponge a couple times. Love them. And um, Two-piece thing, right? Wasn't Grayling uh, a two-piece? Two Three-piece. Three Three-piece, three piece, okay. Yeah. Um, and from there, I worked with Bootsy X from Coldcock, Ramrods, and stuff like that. And then kind of just going on like rocket 455 obviously a detroit group right i uh, dex ron Weber, who i greatly admire from the flat duo jets and lots lots of other stuff and working with some newer bands like the idiot kids who just opened for tyson and i the other night we played a show at the ufo factory how to go love them oh idiot fantastic. kids love them love oh, them the, the, the idiot kids were fantastic it's like detroit bowie like imagine Bowie in front of a D- Detroit like mm-hmm. power yeah. trio and, and well we like to think we had a little part in Bowie you know oh yeah Iggy Pat, yeah there. exactly <laughs> yeah Iggy yeah right, yeah right. and he he gave Detroit a shout out Panic yeah. in Detroit yeah. sorry yeah oh no 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 <laughs> no really the the idiot kids were fantastic and like stuff like that working with John Sinclair on his new album. You know, from uh, so how do you MC interface with John Sinclair, man? How does an eighteen-year-old kid <laughs> you just just dial up John Sinclair, like the guy who started the? Uh, he's the guy who started the Paul McCartney rumor, right? That's uh, that's Russ Gibb. Oh, that's who, Russ who Gibb. The, okay, the sorry. Ballroom. No, uh, John Sinclair was um, he ran the White Panther Party. Yes, right, right. right. He yeah. um, he had a lot. He was the MC Five manager. John Sinclair. Yeah, I just had lot. Peter Werby on the yeah. show. Oh yeah, yeah. fellow yeah. anarchist. Nice call. Yeah, yeah. Fan- fantastic. John Lennon Great. wrote a song about him. Yeah, John Lennon wrote a song about John Sometime Sinclair. In New York. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if uh, if John John Lennon writes a song about you, you must be doing something. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what, but he's doing something. something. Right. Unless you're Paul McCartney Unless and he writes a song about you, then it might not be back a off, good thing. Yeah, as, Ring, yeah. as Ringo said, back off, Boogaloo. Back off, Boogaloo. Yeah, no, but, uh, <laughs> so how, how, does, how does one get in touch with John Sinclair, and what's that first meeting like? Call him. You just called him. Yeah. No, but uh, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, word of mouth spreads, because not many people around here are doing vinyl. Um you know, not, not not really many people because people mainly self-release their projects. Yeah. But you know, there's so many great musicians like uh, like Dooley Wilson and the Idiot Kids who you know they've been playing around town a lot, but you know they haven't really made records. So just getting getting them in the studio. I, and Billy 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 Davis, and uh, I, I'm actually I'm looking at the screen right now. Yeah, this is your website. You know, yeah, this yeah. is the website and. Um, Billy Davis, it's an immense honor to work with him. Uh, we, Tyson, Tyson, I and Billy Davis had a rather intimate show at this place called Assemble Sound, and it's right, uh, it's a kitty corner from the, uh, the the big Michigan Central train station. Mm-hmm. And um, Billy Davis performed. Billy Davis was in Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. He played on Finger Pop in Time, Let's Go, Let's Go, Let's Go, like all those hits. And he taught Jimi Hendrix how to play guitar. And he was close personal friends with Sam Cooke, Jackie Wilson, and Elvis. And I'm working with him on some records. Wow. Which is pretty crazy. And he is a magnificent Rock and Roll person. Hall of Fame. Oh, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. inductee. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, he, yeah. It's just, you know. And, 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 and the thing I wanted to say, because Jarrett does not you know he's he he's not blowing his own horn. Yeah, Jarrett, um, he brings all these like he brought me and Billy together, and now I want to work with Billy, and Billy wants to work with me, and it's yeah. because of this alchemy. He's because got to... of him. You it, know, it's these two people that never would have met in any yeah, other setting. Exactly. Wow, good so, for you, man. So yeah, so uh, you know, getting getting them together. You know, I thought that was. The best thing to I mean, it was a fantastic show and people came and it was close. It was actually recorded live, um, so I'm not sure what we're going to be doing with that. We have the recordings. Okay. But um, with that, I think the best thing to come from that is you know Tyson working with Billy because I think something could really be special there. Coupled with Tyson's voice uh, I'm, and yeah, Billy's I'm so excited. Are, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So there's good things to come from that. Wow. Exactly. Dude, you're like a a, a mad scientist. You're you're oh, a chemist. I don't know. Yeah. I and, mean, and just the blending and the. 
I want to throw in that if I had, you know, we were talking about my uh, career. If I had gone in this sort of like trajectory yeah. of like Billy Corgan, which you know I is is what it is, but I wouldn't have all these like opportunities that are so cool that like the masters of the universe are going. Oh, let's uh, yeah. let's put him let's pair him with billy davis and see what happens you know and and uh jared's like the medium for all that which is pretty great and it wouldn't happen right. you know if i was you know in my little castle going oh well yeah, yeah. i've got this festival to play next yeah. week i can't see anyone you know right. if you're too busy counting your money you yeah exactly and, uh, and uh we Ty- gotta go t- 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 right. tyson's um uh there's a reissue of kitchens and bathrooms has I, one of his, I believe it's his second, yes, so, second, second solo, solo album. Yeah, and that came out after Motorcycle Childhood, which was fantastic. It was just mellower. Yeah. Um, but K- Kitchen in the Bathroom is good. That's coming out as a reissue, and it should be out early next year, along with um, Tyson's new record, which is robbing amazing. the nuclear family. Yeah. Right. And so I know yeah. you got a hard out here that you got you got to get out of here. So I don't want to keep you too long, right? Um, oh. It's, how how do people get a hold of like what's the best way to find obviously we got jetplasticrecordings.com right? Right, right and i've got tyson's pulled up here right which is just tysonmead.com yeah, yeah. And, and also for me facebook tyson todd mead tyson todd mead a great okay. way to you know find yeah me, you and know. i'll make sure that on the youtube um uh, whatever social i post up i'll make sure that i include these links for you guys mm, and, right, and everything you, yeah. is there awesome. anything coming up that you want to promote uh, in terms of the record company or any shows is there anything coming up that you'd like to fit in before we wrap it up uh you know really really just working on more records working on with a local band called the, the bright mars okay um and really you know plugging plugging tyson stuff really because yeah. mean, these albums the single really just came out um stay alone is on the a side and that's the song he recorded with half a j uh-huh and the b-side on he's the candy it's an alternate uh, alternate recording of which that song will be on robbing the nuclear family okay. but they're both really on the 45 you know as it stands but that's out now and we're going to get those two albums out next year and hopefully you know obviously you know we're going to work more together on the on the horizon awesome we just went in the studio the other day so oh yeah. cool and the easiest way to get the catalog how do people get their hands on jet plastic recordings stuff um, what's the easiest way to do that it is in record stores all across the detroit area okay and um we distribute exclusively through united record pressing distribution okay. so uh, a lot of stores order through that so really just uh, tell your stores to order through urp jet plastic product and Cool. Yeah, that's, that's and where are, where are you off to? Are you in Detroit for a little longer? Or? I I leave tomorrow. We're actually gonna have uh, we're going to meet up with Lenny Sinclair mm-hmm. later from uh, the famous photographer. She she uh, uh, took Billy Davis's. I I think she's probably taken his picture forever. Right, yeah. But she's the MC Five sort of official photographer. I yeah. would say right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Certainly had the most action. John Sinclair's. Um, yeah, wife, uh, ex-wife. Yeah, John Sinclair's ex-wife. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and she she's she's fantastic and one of the nicest people. So, you got so a I'm excited show. about that. Yeah, I'm cool. excited, I, so, and, about and hopefully, like Billy, forging another connection. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Right. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. This has been awesome. Yeah, this thanks for really squeezing it in. It was awesome to meet both of you. Um, I wish you the best on, on this part of your career. Um, it seems like it's going great, it's, man. It, you yeah, look great. it's been you great. Sound great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jared. I, I can't look wait good. to I see. I feel good. Yeah. yeah man. <laughs> I can't wait. 18 years old. This is just crazy. I know. Yeah. I know. He. It's. So, thank yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again down the road sometime. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you very sure. much. Thanks, everybody. All right. Do we cool. take a, a quick selfie or something? Is that something that happens? Yes. Yeah. Cool. cool. Awesome. I definitely want to get a picture of you guys right here. Uh, if you could sit.